uh, at the cannery. Now, there was the work. It was ugly, tiresome montage of fish heads, repetition, blood, and fatigue. Is what I wrote. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Your right arm was just like this. You're just gonna bleed. Stop me. It was dead. And the, now the fish were magnificent. I could not believe these, uh, especially the cold salmon. They were they were blood red. They're beautiful, they, and their head was teal green. And the males undergo a hormonal awfulness that <laughs> creates a beat on their face in the last few months before they go up the stream. And now, the, I, I did get a good chance. I talked to a Native American lady who had a little gift shop, and she told me uh, some stories, and I bought some uh, uh, things she had made from her and so forth. She told me that, that uh, about in May or so, the fog woman would stand on the mountain and flutter her skirts. And that is what brought the salmon out of the sea and up they came to the, the little streams that they were hatched in. And so they would spawn and die. And uh, so next time you're throwing some salmon on the grill, <laughs> you remember that. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, I, I've got this. Uh, the halibut, however, were, were just trained, man. They've got a, they're monstrosities. They have a goblin like head, and they're huge. And some of them were like hogs. They're big. <laughs> <laughs> and they're big. They're big. They're big. They're big. They're Ten o'clock on a Saturday night, and my friends are all at home having a swell time, you know. Anyway, the, uh, within about three days of the first opening, the uh, the uh, workforce was reduced by half. Most of these were college students, and they, you know, you're, you're doing this all day, and it just uh, it's a lot of noise. It's chilly. Uh, it, it, a lot of blood and so forth. They just left. And so, at any rate, we worked day in, day out for eight weeks. It wasn't long before my dreams were full of fish. <laughs> One time I dreamt I was on a conveyor belt trying to sleep and gathering armloads of sand in to form a fish pillow under my face, <laughs> which quickly squirted out from under into the sides, and then I woke up. And it was time to pull on boots, tromp down the hill to the Quonsets, and begin again. Now, there were a, a lot of guys from other countries there, and it was my good fortune to make friends with a number of them. The, the, uh, the Mexicans were, in particular, they were blessed. They sang as they worked, and it kept their spirits up, you know, and, and I mean, gutting fish, and I'm talking about for, we, we were, worked 18, 19 hour days and at the end of it, you were just, you were a mess. And though they would sing while they worked, and the Mexican guys had some, I don't know, it's kind of cheesy in a way, but hey, it worked. They, at the end of the song, one of them would crow like a rooster, and they would all laugh, and they thought that was pretty good. Well, and I guess it was. Now, the Asian guys worked silently. They did not sing songs. The American guys had this is just golden. Now, please listen. The American guys had no songs. They all knew the words. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the stars back in the band. <laughs> and that was not good. <laughs> okay, so they're kind of, but we want a song to sing. You know, because there's only so many things you can tell to a guy next to you while you've got him sick. <laughs> you know, and you just, you hate him, you hate the whole goddamn world. <laughs> Here's a story. Rocky <laughs> Lady. We're bringing up three very rugby girls. All 
And this was Mikos Island, by the way. That was settled by the Russians some time ago. Uh, and by the way, the cemetery there had little houses. Uh, ghost houses, they're called, which were pretty cool. And I could get off on that tangent. I'm going to stay here, though. Here was, here was, uh, I sat down in the sea, and little did I know that I had sat down by the island's drug dealer, pink pirate assassin, and loan shark, and he just had to be named Roger Jolly. <laughs> and his wife, Tempest, who was a, a woman of easy virtue. She was his wife and uh, his, you know, kind of his uh, business asset, I guess. <laughs> Any of you out there that are going to be parents, don't name your daughter Tempest. <laughs> Just don't do it. She will end up out in the middle of the American wilderness being, uh, I, I don't even want to get into it now. <laughs> Trust me on this. So I was, there I was, sitting right next to them. And, uh, you know, what I just blow a lot. You ever have a dumbass attack? <laughs> I have. I still do. I think I, I read years ago a uh, book where, I forget if it was some French philosopher or maybe Carl Jung or somebody was talking about uh, a milkmaid who charged into a burning house, left the baby in the crib carried out the fire tongs. That is a dumbass attack. <laughs> well, I had one, and I had a big one. And I sat down next to these, the scariest people on earth. <laughs> to look upon, I, I wrote this later, to look upon Roger Jolly was to be violated. <laughs> <laughs> a face like a pan of worms. He looked a little bit like Wild Bill Hickok. He wore a cowboy hat. His hair was long. His mustache drooped. He wore a leather jacket. Roger had a floater. He was cockeyed. One eye looking at you, one eye looking for you. <laughs> Should I talk to this eye or that? <laughs> My stepmom was a P.E.O. is it, or P.O.E. member for years and years. She, was, she knew everything about hostessing that was worth knowing. And some 10, 15 years before, she had once said, Matt, if you ever meet a person with a floater, what you do is you stare at their forehead and then it looks like you're looking them by the <laughs> That bit of information came in so heavily. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, we all make more of a thing about looks and, and appearance than we should. But I got to complain about Roger a little more because I stood next to him and he was just scary as hell. You could take his driver's license with his picture on it. And if there were snakes, <laughs> I wrote, Pimp, Lone Shark, Iron Assassin, Drug Dealer, Roger, Jolly did it all. God knows how many feckless reprobates he bound with a log chain and tossed into the bay. I did not want to be one of them. There was no escape now, and I sat down. <laughs>